It's one of the most important battles in Canadian history. This ground zero for the American advance during the War of 1812. Americans captured this estate and made it their headquarters, setting the stage for the decisive Battle of Stony Creek, which saw British and Loyalist supporters force an American retreat and a virtual victory in the war. Today, more than two centuries later, it's a national historic site, attracting visitors and history buffs from across the country. Hi, I'm Alex Mabel, and this is Hometown Tourist at Battlefield House, Museum and Park. Similar to many historic buildings in our region, Battlefield House was built by those in search of a new life in Ontario, which at that time was known as Upper Canada. Many of those arriving in the Hamilton area were Loyalists, Americans loyal to the British Crown. But the family who built Battlefield House had an unusual background. I'm here in the keeping room of Battlefield House and looking around it's amazing to think that this house is more than 200 years old. I'm here with Marnie Maslin, and Marnie, um, Mary Jones Gage uh, was the first person to live in this house. How did she come to acquire the property? Well, Mary Jones Gage was from New York State. Um, she had lost her husband, who died fighting in the Revolutionary War in the United States on the American side. Uh, at that time, when she lost her husband, she had two small children. She remained in New York State for a number of years, and then around 1789, she made the decision to bring her two children, James and Elizabeth, here to Salt Fleet in Upper Canada. At that time, James and Elizabeth were 14 and 16. And uh, she probably made the decision because a good number of her brothers and sisters were also uh, coming here to Upper Canada from New York State. In fact, Mary Jones Gage's brother, Augustus, Jones had been surveying the land under Governor Simcoe, so quite likely she had the inside track on you know, good pieces of land and uh, really would have wanted to come with her brothers and sisters for that moral support. The original home that was built in 1790 was a rough hewn log house. That was replaced six years later with a larger, more modern home. Now, when this house was first built around 1796, it would have been a story and a half. Uh, today you see it as a full two stories. So when it was first built, uh, the second floor was a half story, more like a large open area for storage, for sleeping like a loft. By this point, Mary's son James had gradually taken over responsibility of the homestead and the farm. The family farm was providing enough that they invited those traveling through the area into their makeshift inn. But their simple farming life was interrupted June 6, 1813. That's when the Gage residence was forced to become headquarters for the invading American troops. About 3,000 American soldiers were making their way from Fort George in present-day Niagara-on-the-Lake to Burlington Heights to, to meet up with the, uh, the British. They happened to stop here for the night on the Gage's property. They had well over 400 acres of land, uh, all told. And uh, the story is that the American officers took over the house as their headquarters. And then the actual Battle of Stony Creek took place in the middle of the night, uh, really in the early morning hours of June 6, 1813, when British soldiers traveled from Burlington Heights and attacked the Americans while they slept. And then after that fairly, fairly short battle, uh, some of the wounded uh, were brought into this house. So being the closest home, some of the wounded were brought in to be tended to by the family. Following the Battle of Stony Creek, the Gage family returned to their normal lifestyles. James had begun several business ventures around Hamilton and Burlington, and the family added to the home. The house uh, was occupied by James and his, his wife Mary, um, James's mother Mary, and their ten children. They had six girls and four boys, and the Gage family lived here until 1835. They went on to live in Hamilton, and the property changed hands several more times over the following decades. By the end of the late 1800s, the house was in a state of disrepair. The property overgrown, and the home long past its prime.
It remained a farm from what we understand, but it was sold and resold between 1835 and 1899. Then 1899, it came up for sale again. It was $1,900 for, for this house, <laughs> but this is over 100 so years ago, of course. Good price for a square foot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and at that time, um, there was a local historical society called the Women's Wentworth Historical Society. Their first president was Sarah Calder, granddaughter of James and Mary Gates. She actually formed this organization for the purpose of purchasing this home to preserve it, to make sure that it wasn't torn down, to make sure that it was preserved, and that people could come and visit the house, uh, learn about the history of the Gage family, and the significant history of the Battle of Stony Creek. So it's been a museum since 1899. Mrs. Calder was both smart and talented. She was the president of the Women's Art Association and an artist in her own right. We always knew from Sarah's story that she was an artist. She was also part of the Women's Art Association of Hamilton. And, uh, but we had never seen any of her work uh, for whatever reason. And then probably about 16 years ago, one of her descendants contacted us by email and said, uh, you know, he was from Georgia, actually. Uh, and he said, you know, uh, one of my relatives has a painting. And we believe it was done by Sarah Calder. And we believe it's of this house. And so that uh, painting was actually donated to the site, to the museum, by the Calder family. And it's, it's really impressive to be able to see it. We were so excited to see something Sarah had painted, but also the fact that it's of this house. The Women's Wentworth Historical Society went to work following the turn of the century, restoring and refurbishing the house. The group opened it as a museum soon after, making it one of the first museums in Canada. Eventually, they purchased more land and opened the surroundings as a public park. They were also instrumental in building the 100-foot-tall monument that looks over the house. It was officially open to the public on June 6, 1913. A lot of people think it was here when you know the Gage family lived on the site or when the battle was fought. But in fact, it was built as a memorial. It was uh, officially uh, constructed to, to honor the soldiers who had died fighting during the Battle of Stony Creek. It was unveiled by Queen Mary in London by means of a transatlantic cable. Some 15,000 people came out to witness it. Across King Street is Smith's Knoll. The Lions Monument, which overlooks the part of the property, also honors the soldiers who fell during the battle. After the Battle of Stony Creek was fought on June 6, 1813, some of the dead were in fact buried in that location. And so those remains actually were unearthed during archaeology in around 1999. And uh, so those remains were reinterred in a special ceremony. And that spot uh, marks the resting place, final resting place, of both American and British soldiers who fought in the, in the battle. Visitors might be surprised to know that there's a second house here on the grounds, uh, the Nash Jackson House. Uh, Martin, can you tell us a little bit about who would have lived in this house? Yeah, so the original owners of this home were cousins of the Gages of Battlefield House. It was actually Susanna Gage, James Gage's cousin, who married Samuel Nash. Mm -hmm. And uh, they lived in the home. And it was in it's interesting because four successive generations of that family lived in this home. Mm -hmm. uh, the last of the generations was Leona Nash Jackson. She was born in the house in 1900, uh, raised her children here, uh, farmed with her husband. And then she died in 1996. And it was her children who donated this home to the city of Stony Creek at the time. Mm -hmm. And then it was moved here to the park. Yeah, it was, it was just down the road, right? It was. It was located at the corner of King and Nash. Mm -hmm. And I, I understand it was uh, a little tricky to, to get it right into the spot. There was uh, a bit of maneuvering, yeah. yes. There was a, a large truck and it actually drove it right down the street. So that was quite a sight to see. And that was in 1999. Very neat. Uh, and I can't help but notice, and, and there's stenciling in, in Battlefield House as well, but up in the corner over here, there's a little bit of a stencil. What's the significance of that? Yeah, so this is only a very small uh, stencil, and that's all that was discovered actually in this home compared to a large uh, a piece of stenciling at Battlefield House. And it was really, it was a way of decorating in the early 1800s. And so it's interesting to see that relationship that both homes have the stenciling. When guests are done checking out the homes, they're encouraged to go out and explore the grounds, taking paths through the forest, seeing the beautiful gardens, and learning more about Battlefield Park.
Our educational programs are really, really popular, really strong part of our, our programming here at the site. We get uh, a number of children visiting us, or actually several thousand children visiting us, uh, kindergarten, grade three, grade seven, and they come uh, all through the year to, to learn about very as various aspects of the site. Um, the early settler history of the site, the military history of the site, and those are really strong programs that we offer. And of course, the grounds host the annual reenactment of the Battle of Stony Creek. Every June, hundreds of participants suit up in period costumes to stage the battle in front of spectators. It's a really wonderful event, and in fact, um, it's one of the longest running War of 1812 reenactments in North America. <laughs> But it's an amazing event. It's uh, really an event that a lot of people return to year after year. You know, thousands of people come, and we have these wonderful people, these reenactors, whose hobby it is to dress up in, in old-fashioned clothing. They live here for two or three days. You know, they camp out, they eat over open fire, and then they tell us, they show us through the reenactment, you know, what it was like. Huh? They bring history to life so we can understand really what it was like 200 years ago. Guests can visit the soldier encampment and mingle with early 19th century settlers and soldiers and see how they lived, including taking cooking, dancing, and blacksmith lessons. The museum is open nearly every day of the year, providing guests with a living history of Hamilton and Stony Creek, where they can see pieces like this one. I'm Alex Mabel, and this has been Hometown Tourist at Battlefield House.